So last weekend I went to an event on sex education, a sex ed conference. And the theme of the conference was uh, inclusive sex education in schools and youth groups. It was attended by a lot of sex educators from around the country, uh, that's teachers, uh, youth workers and students themselves. And I went along uh, and I found it very useful indeed. It was full of great workshops and talks and uh, plenary sessions which ranged from polyamory to uh, masturbation and discussions like uh, what you want to see from uh, the sex ed curriculum in future and uh, things like sex education as a human right. I spent most of the day writing down notes in my notebook uh, on this and hopefully some videos may uh, appear on these subjects in future uh, with some of the things that I picked up from the day. But there's a couple of things I wanted to pick up on right now. Uh, one of them is the role of men in sex education. We had a session about uh, men and their, not necessarily directly related to sex education, but boys and young men and their behaviours which uh, youth workers work on, uh, which include attitudes to uh, women or people in general, uh, the porn they watch, uh, all sorts of things. Now, uh, sex education is quite a female dominated field, shall we say, and there weren't all that many men there, but this was such an interesting discussion. So one of the themes was um, casework that uh, somebody had, a youth worker had, uh, where they would be concerned about certain behaviours, such as the young men and boys looking at maybe bestiality on the internet or other things which are actually technically illegal uh, in porn terms, but also remembering that actually some searches are perfectly normal, even if they're not widely accepted in society. And often these people get referred by schools or um, social workers who may not have all the knowledge around this subject. So hence why uh, youth organisations uh, like the one that came to talk to us are very useful and vital in a lot of cases. I've talked before about how uh, certain men have recently been called out by mostly women about their behaviours when it comes to sexual contact. Now men, as in those over 18, or those over the majority age in that country, should know better. But often they haven't received the education when they're younger. They haven't received their education on relationships, on uh, treating people with respect when it comes to kind of sexual courting or however you want to describe what's going on. <laughs> A lot of things which feed into this, some of it's about consent, some of it's about um, what is reasonable behaviour, what isn't reasonable behaviour. So one thing that this uh, youth worker uses is something called the dick headline. And actually, it's very simple. You've got at uh, this end uh, somebody who you would be fine with dating your daughter, right? Okay. And somebody at this end whose behaviour is basically illegal. They could easily be arrested and uh, taken to court and put into prison. Now, between these two extremes is uh, a lot of shades of dickhead. So what the youth worker does, especially with groups of boys, would have certain behaviours and they would put them on the line as to how dickhead are you? <laughs> and the point is, of course, is that, okay, some things are clearly not as bad, you know, and some things are terrible. You want to be far across over here and be a person who uh, everybody would be happy for their daughter to date. Because you hear a lot about men saying, where is the line, you know? And what they actually mean by that is how close can I get to the line uh, and be as dickhead as possible while doing it. So this is the point, you know, over here is illegal and if you're doing that you're going to get arrested, therefore you wouldn't ever want to be anywhere near it. For some people unfortunately that is the line. <laughs> but there are plenty of things which aren't illegal, you're not going to get arrested, but are pretty dickhead. And that would include things like uh, hugging somebody for too long because for your own sexual gratification, right? Or being inappropriate at work and making sexual comments to uh, the female or indeed the male staff. So, you know, not illegal, you're not going to get arrested, but definitely a dick move. But all this, especially for white and cis and straight uh, men, uh, understandably they um, 
don't understand this new world because they have never experienced it before. They've never been shown it on television or in movies or anywhere like that. And they don't know where they fit in in this new world. And of course it's down to education. Of course that isn't an excuse, but it can be a reason. And I think everybody in the room agreed, um, not just the men, everybody in the room agreed that uh, we need to be educating our uh, boys and young men about relationships and how they treat other people uh, and especially women. That was such an interesting session and uh, I wonder if you've got any thoughts about this as well, how uh, young men and boys are treated and how they need to find their place in the 21st century. And you can do that by leaving comments below the video. But don't go yet, uh, I've got a little treat for you. Literally, uh, at the end of the conference uh, we had a bit of a social, but we also made some vulva cupcakes. So here's some that I made. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's got the labia majora just down on the outside, and then the labia minora. And we've got a clitoris as well. Uh, and unfortunately, because <laughs> they are um, cupcakes, I didn't get the urethra and the vagina, although there is obviously a gap there for them. But that was a lot of fun. <laughs> It wouldn't be a sex ed conference if you didn't have some sort of fun genital making uh, session. And of course, they were very tasty as well. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then why not give it a thumbs up? You can do that just down below. I make videos every single week. So that's a really good reason to subscribe. And I shall therefore see you next time. Bye bye.